subtle. The truth is unstable. Nothing can be discerned but sweat and silence, like climbers roped together, seeking to transgress the forbidden. The fence simultaneously protects those who are still there, about whom we know nothing, okay. and those who dare venture in without knowing how to make use of what they may find Some, there. Uh... Quick At the end of the journey, amid the humid dilapidation, in many rooms, voices, this room uh, of wishes, Rausch, where architects Francois is, it, the is in the partnership, many dimensional partnership with uh, Stephanie Laveau, and they, in their office, founded in 1989 in Paris. Uh, I think what's super important you. about uh, Francois Roche and Stephanie's uh, research is exactly that, it, that it's research. It uh, you have a lot in architecture, people talking about going to the limits, the testing the limits, uh, experimenting, da 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 da. In fact, uh, architects use the word research every three or four four sentences, so it's a word of incredibly little value. You could even say architects have assembled themselves as a kind of army to devalue the word uh, research. But every now and then there are architects who are actually testing the limits, and one of the s symptoms of that is people become very uncomfortable. For, for example, if, if, if uh, there are so many architects testing the limits, uh, surely if they were testing the limits, we would feel uncomfortable. Uh, d un discomfort is when your limits are being violated. So how can there be an entire army of architects testing the limits and nobody's getting uncomfortable anywhere? Uh, or even more, that they want to test the limits and be paid commission to make projects which test those limits, which means actually people want to be comfortable in these machines that are meant to make you uncomfortable. So basically we have a kind of industry which has sold the idea of exploring and testing uh, limits, and we would as architects seem to have a special claim on that because limits sound like lines or walls or divisions. So then you would expect a kind of architecture which challenges limits and so on, and actually doesn't happen. And oddly enough, uh, Francois Roche is, is exactly that, like that. Reminds me of Buckminster Fuller, because Buckminster Fuller listens to the theory of modern architecture, right? Architecture should be industrialized, light, efficient, and so on. New technology, more like an airplane than a building, and so on. And actually makes architecture exactly like that. And as a result, is not exhibited in the 1932 show in Museum of Modern Architecture, because the last thing the modern architects want to be is actually modern. Maybe Francois Roche is, th is the same, uh, that he actually has the idea, like everybody else, that maybe we should test limits, but he's actually like Fuller, takes it seriously and actually t tests the limits, and this makes people uncomfortable. I mean the limits of, of what is organic, what is technological, what is computational, what is robotic, what is chemical, and so on. Francois is in love with anything that's forbidden, uh, more recently, this means experimental work with toxicity, and this almost inevitably led him to the current work on death, because toxicity is uh, ultimately um, uh, a highway uh, towards death. Uh, if it's a long highway, you can live your whole life on toxicity for a long time and then die from it. You can even be, let's say, the architect of that journey, and this is more or less what I think Francois is. In a more precise terms, one of the many things I admire about Francois is in all of this he's trying to uh, imagine what kind of uh, protocols, and I'm using his word, what kind of protocols would uh, regulate or foster or, or um, uh, incubate uh, a, a real kind of architectural uh, research agenda within these uh, themes. He's been doing this kind of work on new protocols for about the last uh, four years uh, here at the school. He's recently, uh, uh, he and Stephanie did an amazing installation in, as one of the featured, very few featured architects in Sejima's Biennale, and it really was one of the highlights in the Arsenale, which was an exhibition that was actually literally uh, radioactive um, until they found out that that was the case, and then elements of the exhibition were re removed, and Francois Roche was once again rendered safe, innocuous, and so on. Hopefully he's with us tonight in his more radioactive, toxic mode. Uh, Francois. So, thank, you, thank you, Mark. It's, uh, so it's a, I think it's the third lecture I'm doing here. The, the first time it was in 1990, so I was not speaking English. I, I'm not sure I'm speaking better English now, but uh, after 10 years, but 1990, so there was no other way to present the projects and to spit and to drool on the table. 
So Bernard was a little bit excited by, by, by toxicity, it was Bernard to me at this period. Uh, so at the, the second lecture, uh, it, it was a way to, to, to think of an architect who also dirt, dirt the auditorium where he has to explain architectures. He has to, to, to dirt and, to, and to, to make kind of, to affect the situation. The second lecture, it was with Mark, and Mark invited me as a Congo boy. So he presented me, that's what, this time he was more presenting me as a limit. Limit, no, it's a kind of a, a military ship uh, there's a movie, The Limits, uh, I remember about that, and uh, I think The Limits is kind of an uh, 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 aircraft sh uh, ship which is a crossing another reality through a hurricane, which perhaps we are not so far away from this kind of uh, definition. And uh, the second time I was a Congo boy trying to escape from uh, the Zaire, the Belgium uh, period of the Congo. So uh, thanks for this <laughs> third invitation. Uh, my English is better, but I hope my project also are better. So uh, I'm not sure of that. Uh, uh, when you are when you teaching, teaching is not so easy to mix to mix uh, the arrow of time between talking and producing, and uh, this kind of uh, uh, it's kind of uh, you have to manage uh, a, a dimension, a schizophrenia, uh, a dimension between you cannot explain everything when you are teaching. If you explain too much, you flat the relief. And uh, explanare, explanation is etymologically, uh, uh, it means e making flat the relief. So how to teach without to make flat the relief and to keep the relief intact, to hide yourself behind the shadows of the relief. That is not so easy in a way to teach and to produce and to keep uh, uh, intact the possibility of this uh, schizophrenic production. So I have to touch something to stop. So uh, wait, normally I, I appear as an avatar, uh, because normally, not normally, but normally my avatar is talking at the place of me. Uh, so normally I'm not here, so I'm not exactly Francois Roche, because Francois Roche is a little uh, 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 girls and boy, uh, uh, transsexual uh, 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 girls and boy appearing on, the, on this video. So we appear since 15 years uh, through this avatar. We make some, sometimes we did some exhibition of the avatars in f uh, uh, dying. So how the avatars could appear at the end of the, at the middle of the 20s, uh, uh, of, the, of the 2000 millennium, a bit very bitter about his own career, what I'm not exactly now, but uh, it's, uh, it's to hide ourselves. It was a political status uh, 15 years ago to disappear entirely and to think that we could desidentify des the architects. So now it's became a coquetry uh, 15 years after. So I think we have to decide to appear again, to rebirth, to rebirth after 15 years appearing through this avatar. But we, I'm not the only one. You talk about Stephanie Lavo at uh, the studio. So I'm um, uh, just carrying the luggage and Stephanie is carrying the brain. So she's not here tonight. And uh, so I try to carry the luggage with the brain of Stephanie, which is a ghost of the, of the, of the lectures of tonight. So well. Now I need to touch something. I think I have to touch. Yes, I have to touch it. I have to touch it. And to say hello. Yeah, OK. So just uh, uh, the last book we just published but with the Princeton Press and with the Italian book, Italian publisher, very bad book, so uh, please don't buy it. Uh, uh, the publisher is not here, OK? But don't buy it. We have been totally abused. Uh, the project is uh, our project. But we, it was interesting. The publisher came and said, could we do a book about the surface of your work? And Deleuze was always talking about, could we do something on the surface of things? Which is an interesting concept, because to go deep and deep and deep, we are lost in the deepness of many things. When you are going, we sink in the deepness. When you let at the surface, you smell the dirtiness without to dirt yourself. Which was a very interesting concept, but finally, there is no dirtiness, no, no surface, nothing, just uh, bad books. Just bad books, so it's a rise. Well, we are talking about Mainly we are talking about machine, but we are not exactly, so that's uh, Biennal two years ago, uh, about machine where we present this kind of, uh, we talk about bachelor machine. I will explain later what is bachelor machine, the concept of Picabia and Duchamp, the kind of uh, Dadaism, post-Dadaism, and, uh, and pre-surrealism, uh, which is a machine which is able to construct something, but also to tell a story, storytelling, to invade or to ali desalienate the storytelling of the post-capitalism, but a way to, 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 to produce in the architecture is not only the effective production as efficiency of, uh, as a tooling, the efficiency of construction, but also the narrative, the narrative aspect, the storytelling of how the rumor of how the machine could do something else or could produce something else in a subjective way, in, uh, in a paranoiac way. So I would like to 
speak tonight, uh, I don't remember the title, the title is a bit complex, but it's, we are not here to explain the title, no? we, 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 the title is not my fault, it's not my responsibility. So, uh, so well, uh, uh, don't think I'm trying to explain the title, no? the title is totally, uh, it's uh, shooting me, I find well, it's, it's uh, on the other side. Uh, well, I, I will try to do for the first time something which is uh, a little complex because uh, Mark Wigley, we did an interesting conversation, uh, talking speeches very, uh, at the Biennale, and he asked me, not only me, yes, to several architects, but me also, I was in the several architects, uh, uh, why you make so much effort in your work to stay or to, to, to be a loser? Wow, good question. So I will try to answer tonight why I'm, 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 I'm a loser, no. No, why well, uh, 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 I try, uh, well, you know, th there, is, uh, there is winner, there is loser, and there is prophet. I, I, I hope there is a fourth category, but uh, I didn't find the, the last, another category, so I'm not prophet, it's clear. I'm not a winner, so I hope I'm not a loser. But uh, I will try to explain something which is, um, we tried all the time to articulate our work. We all the time try to understand what we did before, and with uh, like a necrophagia, necrophagia, a necrophagia, or cannibalism, when you are self-cannibalizing yourself. And uh, it's, it's uh, so we are always repeating the next work with the previous works and to try to articulate past and futures. And it's, it's clear that on, on the work, if we try to, to reread uh, as a platform of work of this last 20 years, we did, we, we, have we have tried to articulate fiction, speculation, and I could say H and N, not H A M, but H and N, N, which is here and now. We have tried to articulate a kind of arrow of time between uh, here and now is to negotiate, to compromise, to understand, to, to, to force, and to strategically understand the, the aesthetically and politically the compromise with the system, even in this compromise, to develop a strategy of fragility, so to accept the compromise at the level of uh, a building which could appear as temporary, which could appear as fragile, which could appear as nothing, erasing by the blow of the wolf, if you remember the three little pig story. Uh, uh, so our building could be nothing, could be erased, could be, could, uh, as the subject we have, uh, the, the topic we have uh, this year, as, as last year, is a teaching course, our building could die, or our building could be something which could be totally erased, like the Rauschenberg, perhaps you know Rauschenberg bought uh, De Koning a painting in the 50s, and he just erased the painting to make a monochrome. So the monochrome was not coming from the white painting of Malevich, uh, the, the constructivism, uh, pre-constructivism uh, painter, but it was coming from erasing. So we have a part I will show at the end, the here now apparatuses where we try to compromise with the situation, with uh, sometimes low budget and sometimes low ideas, weak ideas and low budgets. Uh, the weak idea, I'm not sure, but to, to, to erase. Another part of the project is a speculative protocol. I will start with this. Speculative is to make research, not exactly for the futures, because when, when, Thomas, Ma when, Thomas, Ma when the, uh, the Thomas More was doing Utopia, was writing Utopia, uh, Thomas Mann is the death of Venice, that's why I'm probably just coming back for Venice. But Thomas More, well, so uh, after the death experiment of Venice, I'm, I'm still alive. But uh, Thomas, Thomas, uh, Thomas More was this book of Utopia trying to speculate on another, on another situation. It's not exactly a religious propaganda of the futures, like the modernism, or like the religious Promethean uh, 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 view of uh, progress, but it's, it's more in some occasions, something could appear with a different protocol, uh, with a different way to organize a social contract, with a different way to produce physically, constructively, the social contract. So speculation is about that. It's not for tomorrow. It's to produce a point somewhere in the space. Uh, it could be simul simultaneously to our time, and how this point could magnetize, magnetize our present, magnetize our tooling, magnetize our knowledge. Fiction is a s s third, uh, uh, the, the second uh, uh, apparatus, uh, the apparatuses I want to talk to tonight. Fictional is for us to infiltrate the storytelling, to infiltrate, to désaliénate the storytelling of the post-capitalism, in a way to, 
to think that we could drive the industry to go somewhere, to orient the production, to orient the industry, and to force a little bit, to push the industry to go somewhere. So it's a fiction as a principle of reality, of transforming the reality. So, uh, and honestly, we are always sharing uh, very uncomfortably uh, between this arrow of time, between thinking today as a here and now procedure, fiction as a pushing tomorrow, and spe speculation as nowhere or somewhere uh, production. Uh, so first. First, first uh, I, I want to, to very quickly, because you know, I have always this kind of, uh, 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 always this kind of uh, um, paradigm when I start the lectures, is first rereading on natures. Rereading on natures could be fantastically, a fantastic addiction, of course, but uh, don't forget that uh, on the, it's, a, it's a book of uh, Orth uh, Breitkamp. He, he, last two years, he understood that uh, Darwin, Charles, uh, Charles Darwin was uh, rereading the natures at the Library of, uh, of London and copying, mimicry the natures. And through the mimicry of the coral, through the gorgon, exactly, the coral, uh, through the mimicry of the, you, you see here a drawing of Charles Darwin exactly on the, on the coral, on the, uh, that is the gorgon, gorgon coral of the, of the London Library, and the drawing of Darwin, which finally defines the evolution of the species through the mimicry. So the mimicry of the nature produces a mimesis, produces a rereading of the vitalism, produces a rereading of the snapping between branching, because the coral is not exactly as the uh, trees. The coral have this possibility to have two, two branching here, you see here, two branching, re-snapping themselves to create another generation, a kind of uh, a transitory species. Or uh, an hybrid species, uh, like a transsexual species. So uh, I come back all the time uh, on my transsexual, but in a way, <laughs> in a way, it's also a way to explain that nature is not only uh, uh, um, a vector of uncertainties, it's not only a vector of undeterminacy, of unprediction, and how the tooling of now, of computation, could help us perhaps sometimes to, to, to rewrite or to uh, reanalyze this potential of uh, undeterminacy, it's also uh, a vector of knowledge, a vector of polemic. Uh, you know how you in the US now the Darwinism or the creationism is a polemic. And it's perhaps it's uh, one of the vectors of the new election will be, will be entirely defined uh, by this, on, not entirely, but a part defined in the US by this uh, huge difference and huge uh, ideological uh, 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 reading of science and, and religious value. So, uh, so another, another paradigm I love to talk is between, between entertainment and entertainment. One entertainment is just playing the game of 3D uh, special effect. So we know that we an architect no, are not so bad to play this game. And uh, the another entertainment, which is not exactly an entertainment, could trouble our, trouble the identity. Could trouble the the uh, not only the morphology. We don't know if it's a freak. We don't know if it's my baby my baby doll. We don't know if it's uh, 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 we don't know if it's uh, coming directly from a, a computu computation uh, 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 morphogenesis morphing. But in a way, it's re-questioned the limits of our own identity. And that, well, I don't want to go further, but well. Another uh, paradigm is the logic. Logic, logic between, uh, between uh, uh, causality and dependencies. Very quickly, is the story of the worm. The worm is the Toxoplasma gondii. The worm, the only position of this worm to reproduce itself is to go in the stomach of the cat. And the worm finds a way to be in the food of the rats, uh, from the food of the rats to reach the brain of the rat to disinhibit the fears of the cat. Because of that, the rat su suicide itself in front of the cat. The cat, of course, profit of the situation and eats the rat. And because of that, the toxoplasma gondii is reaching the stomach of the cat to reproduce and to make babies. So it's very interesting how now architecture is not so far away from that logic, totally <laughs> high logic. And we have to do with this high logic. Uh, it's very difficult to, to find, uh, 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 um, so we are in the metaphor, per in a permanent metaphor. In a, uh, 
metaphor in the etymology uh, is a metaphor as a vehicle of transportation. It means that how the, in the language, in the language value, you, when you use metaphor, is not to make a references on something. It's not bad references. It's more a vehicle of transportation to go somewhere, somewhere where you could see from somewhere where you are. Just quickly, you know this perfectly. It's uh, my idea. Uh, it's the first guy, uh, Stanley, playing the arrow of time with one of the movie is at the same time. He was finishing, releasing one of the movie on the theaters and preparing the script of the other one. So one of the movies done by the CIA, the other is, is done with the NASA. So he was playing on the same time with the propaganda of the futures, explaining the past, which is the Odyssey, and uh, with this kind of uh, Promethean uh, value of research, idealistic value of research, and at the same time was doing the scene of the tortures in the, in the, uh, in the work clock arrange, uh, where the CIA helped him to do it perfectly uh, uh, believable. So it's interesting how the past and the futures, how we negotiate now the arrow of time between, especially in architectures, uh, how we position the arrow of time between, again, fiction, speculation, and here and now. Uh, something uh, uh, about machine, about machine, because I talk about machine. Oh, you know that, of course, uh, everybody knows this kind of uh, robotic, uh, of a b b b b b I don't remember exactly, but Boston Dynamic, uh, the, the big dogs. What is readable in this big dogs is good billion dollars, and it's good billion dollars just to play the game to kick his asshole. So it's, uh, it's a first masochism billion dollar robots. And it's interesting how we are considering now robot uh, not as this kind of sacralization, not as a kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, deification. I'm sure that the world doesn't exist, but, uh, 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 but so you could understand it, a world which doesn't exist. But in a way, it's robot is familiar. It's a tooling. It's something, it's an extension of yourself. You are playing the billion robots as, as a pitiable dogs. And you are making suffering the billion dollars robot as your covenants, which is totally changed the relationship. Another way to re-question the machine is to read the, uh, uh, the, the, the way of how Marcel Duchamp, as I said, on the Picabia on, the, on some others during the Dadaism was talking about the machinism. The machinism was for them to recreate a storytelling, to recreate a narrative uh, a procedure to rearticulate knowledge. So the machine was not in the phantasms of the 19th centuries purely, or in the Fordism, purely an acceleration of production, in a, an acceleration of alienation of worker, but not only a worker, mass production and production for the mass, mm -hmm. but also something which is uh, able to uh, um, define um, a, a, a narrative aspect, a rumor. So a coitus interruptus is a way to tell a story without to entirely frame the functionality of the system. So I'm really interested to, like the, like the duck of Vaucanson, if you know the duck of Vaucanson on the right side is a story of a robot, which is not a robot, which is a, like a duck eating, is a, a Vaucanson, the engineers of the 18th centuries, eating food and cheating. cheating. So it was, a, it was a mechanical system eating and cheating. And finally, it works. Everybody was thinking that the ma machine could eat and shit. And uh, when people discovered that it was a machine, the, 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 the engineers, the scient scientists, was totally exclude, disqualify all, all the French system, and he finished his own life as a homeless. So it was interesting to articulate science as a pataphysic, if you know this word, very strange word, <laughs> as a pataphysic of Alfred Jarry. Articulate sci science and subjectivities. Another Another uh, paradigm uh, I love, it's, uh, it's uh, well, we could go further, but another paradigm I love is a revenge of the natures. Remember this uh, little uh, tree is very, very fragile, very fragile, and people need to take care of him as a surgery with a lot of sophisticated uh, nutritional system. But this tree is killing everything around him. This tree is coming from the dinosaur period. And these trees destroy the forest around, and people need to negotiate or need to choose what kind of nature they want to preserve. 
Do they want to preserve the toxic natures coming from the dinosaur as a witness of the dangerousity or dangerousness of the past? Who do, does they want to preserve the agriculture's natures, which is directly coming from the industrial system of planting, production, growing, and uh, extracting from, the, from this industrial natures? So of course, people choose to burn the trees, to kill the trees, the trees, the toxic trees, to kill the trees, to burn the trees, to keep the natures as an industrial protocol of uh, production, of, uh, of uh, feeding the system. And what is interesting in this uh, references is the little trees, the little trees try to stay toxic after the death experiment of his own burning. He did the first, and he's just coming, he did the first green mushroom, uh, nuclear green mushroom to protest against his own death. Come on. So you could see how the revenge of the natures so the nature, as an architect, we could domesticate the nature, and the French are not so bad for that. Uh, um, I find the French. Uh, how the king used uh, uh, Le Nôtre to, to play this game of domestication of the nature. We could also renegotiate the dangerosity of the nature. So we are really interesting to, to do that. Also, well, after this, I don't want to talk about that. It's a typical polar bear drunk in uh, uh, Arctic Pole because he, he, he drink too much absolute vodka. So well, that is not interesting, but here, we are, we, are, we are talking about architecture, though. Um, here it's probably my favorite uh, paradigm. I have two other more, yes, after we could start. Uh, it's my favorite, it's, uh, it's a question of uh, paranoia. It's a question of confusing reality and uh, illusion. It's illusion through your, your paranoiac, your paranoiac, uh, process of filtering the reality, which is the surrealism uh, 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 notion. How oh, finally you filter the reality, and your paranoia creates another reality. So these two little girls invent the monster, and invent the green monster just in front of them. So we don't know if exactly from where is coming this green monster. Is it coming from their mind uh, to change the reality? So by this way, like Lewis Carroll and uh, Alice in Wonderland, she confused the, the parallel universe in which she is uh, diving, uh, sinking, with her own uh, uh, dreaming of uh, 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 experimenting something new. And that is something I'm really interested of this paranoia of the two little girls. How we could articulate, uh, uh, negotiate this confusion, this illusion between how it appears Oh, and how oh, I want uh, it to make appearing. Another finishing, so you know the story, but it's, it's, uh, it's a kind of surprise. It was a tooling, a little kid's, uh, a little kid chocolate, and it was, it was forbidden to buy this in uh, California uh, in the 60s because the kind of surprise, you could, buy, uh, you could buy a house, you could buy a car in the US by credits on on 20 years, and, but to buy a kid a surprise without to know what is it inside is uh, totally in contradiction with the American value. So uh, that is crazy. So at the same period, you could buy LSD on the campus of, uh, of UCLA, but not kind of surprise. <laughs> so, and we didn't change. So we have to rediscover the unknown in terms of the strategy of the unknown, the strategy of, the, of to be surprised by something inside the kind of surprise. And the last one, it's uh, the last paradigm, it's something I'm, uh, I'm, uh, we are addicted specifically in this, when we are, we are trying to do a speculation. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, pictures of uh, Villard de Nocourt. It's, uh, it's an architect from the Middle Age. And it's an architect which was trying to play a, lo a losing control. So the building of the cathedral um, the, 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 he, he construct or he participate uh, to construct was never draw, was never designed entirely before to start the construction. So the experiment of the construction itself was an experiment of discovery, was an experiment of uh, taking risk and through the risk to reinforce the knowledge to, to take another risk and through the other risk to take another risk. And by this way, the construction was not only uh, as a, in the pursuit of Brunelleschi, in the pursuit of the Santa Maria del Fiore in, in Firenze, but uh, it, it was more the construction and the architecture was more an experiment, an experiment of undeterminacy, of losing control, and, and uh, 
and uh, an achievement, an achievement, the experiment of an achievement. So it's interesting how now with, I don't know, not only with computers, with the media cultures, with computers, with internet, with the networks, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, um, uh, the, uh, the revival of the perhaps uh, multitude, the, the, the notion of multitude in terms of democracy, we could perhaps uh, reopen this uh, open sources or reopen this uh, losing control in terms to produce architecture. Well, that is finished for there. So we start speculative. Speculative, uh, we start six years ago to work, so uh, I'm going very fast. I've heard about uh, experiments. It's an experiment of uh, where with Antonio Negri, the, the philosopher of the multitude, the philosopher of the, how we could produce something between bottom up and top down, which is the main question from me or from my group. Could we do when we do speculation, so to invent another reality, another social contract, we do something which without to, as uh, Villard de Necourt, without to know exactly what we are doing and how we could protocolize this losing control, this indeterminacy. So we, we, six years ago, we were working about a kind of um, mimicry of a, a coral system, like a foam in 3D produced by a machine which is able to secrete by concrete, uh, by dropping concrete and uh, 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 3D structures which could be, which is able to be colonized as, as a second life, as an after experiment. So finally, the first structures was, uh, so what was that? Is special effect, and uh, so I will explain better th the protocol, but uh, it was more how to produce uh, structures which could be like a troglodyte, if you know the troglodyte architectures, which could be modified by the people trying to colonize these uh, 3D structures. So we developed this kind of uh, machine, we could develop this kind of pneumatic system, trying to understand what kind of uh, uh, logic of, uh, uh, of um, logic of uh, behavior of robotic we could do to reach each x, y, z point. And of course, it's a little bit uh, uh, ridiculous in a way, but in a way, uh, it was, a, it was a, a situation to define a protocol of uh, 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 smoothing the clay or smoothing the concrete without framework, without any casting where to release the construction in concrete or in clay, for example, here for the prototype, for the little uh, experiment, to release from the frame, from the cost, to release the concrete from the cost of the uh, framework. And you see the scale, very small, <laughs> like my budget, of course. Uh, but uh, so it's uh, mainly, it was to understand what kind of shape could be done without to understand perfectly the achievement of the building to go in this construction as a work in process and uh, to change and to, to, to also to integrate the possibility that the, we could we are able to change the algorithm during the, the secretion production. So for example, the tube, the double tube is very simple, uh, kind of Boolean system on a tube, but in a way we just change. We just change by the scripting during the protocol of construction. So I'm really interested to by this M metamorphosis, where everything is not predictable, entirely predictable, but could be done and discover. So with, uh, uh, the limit of the exercise was uh, we were not able to integrate the desire, the individual desire. The, so after this is just a, a coral habitation where people could live inside and discovering finally the, the phantasm of the architect. The second experiment we just now uh, uh, release in Paris and in Basel and going in grass in the blue bubble of uh, Peter Cook is something which is, uh, oh, first, first, of course, as an architect, we have to construct even the 3D, the 3D uh, protocol, so the algorithm we did at this period, uh, five years ago, to produce this uncertainties uh, system was uh, used to produce a hypnosis chamber uh, with uh, the hypnosis uh, specialist of Jacques Lacan, it's uh, François Roustan. And we develop a kind of hypnosis session through, uh, the, through which the people could not dream of another world, but travel in another reality. So through hypnose, it's not exactly, it was not exactly the experiment of rediscovering yourself in your mind, but more to discover another reality which could reorganize uh, entirely your relationship through architectures or through your neighborhood. So we are now populating the world <laughs> with this kind of hypnosis, uh, uh, hypnosis rooms. That is the second hypnosis 
in Japan, in Towada, exactly, last, uh, last three months. So it's like uh, Stargate. It's like a Stargate, you know, the TV series, a Stargate uh, monument everywhere where people could connect themselves through hypnose and by this way to jump, as a beat me up Scotty, uh, through another reality. What is interesting, what is interesting is uh, clients are interested now to develop with us this, uh, this vector of translation. Vector of translation, it's, uh, it's called, it was a very important uh, political movement in the 18th uh, centuries in France and in Germany, and it was called the Sleeping Walker. Sleeping Walker was only a feminine movement, was a club of, uh, of feminine, uh, of, of, uh, of girl, which, was, which were trying to invent another layer, another uh, uh, democratic layer, but only reachable through hypnosis only reachable through this vector of translation to reach another reality of freedom. And it's really interesting. Or oh, sometimes we play the game of freedom, you could be free tomorrow if you are slave today, which is finally all the modernity plays this game as a religious value. And uh, uh, in this case, in this case of uh, political movement, it was more, if you want to see this, if you, if you, if you think this word bad, you should see the others which is very interesting. If you think this word bad, you should see the others. Because the architects are always tr trying to define, you need to invent some others. And to should see the others is a parallel, the parallel universe is just on your side, and just not so far away from your existence. So we are populating now the world. So, but in a way, what we are trying now in this experiment we are showing in Paris is to read the desire. Speculate. We are in the speculation part of my studio. I don't know how we articulate the three parts, speculation, fiction, and uh, here and now. But in this speculation, I will try to explain perhaps later, but in this speculation part, we have developed this year the nanotechnology. So it's a f I think it's the smallest building on the world. It's 10 minus seven. Um, so it's a nanotechnology we did uh, uh, this year, at the beginning of this year. And uh, this nanotechnology is able to reread the concentration of your chemistry inside your body. He's, a, he's, a, he's able to reread the ignore desire, the hidden desire, what we call the brainless, the headless desire. So your, the concentration of your dopamine, of your serotonin, of your adrenaline, of your dopamine, in a way the concentration of several elements which are able to indicate how you react through the mutation of an environment. So we developed this, uh, this, uh, this little uh, nanotechnology, and uh, with this nanotechnology, we have tried to create a machine, a psycho machine, to reread through an interview, like, uh, like a line detector, a little bit, uh, or like some experiment in the, in the 70s, through an interview to reread the schizophrenia between your reaction through language on the surface of your cultures, on your surface of your exchanging with the world and with the world, uh, and, and through uh, simultaneously through the possibility to reread the concentration of some substances of chemistry inside your body, as dopamine, serotonin, and adrenaline. So we did this machine uh, this year in, uh, in Paris with some protocol, very scientific protocol of experiment uh, between paranoia and reality, uh, and uh, where we have tried to understand the malentendu. Malentendu, it cannot be translated, I'm sorry, in English. It's uh, between mishearing and misunderstanding, which I don't know if you could understand what, um, what this means. But to understand the malentendu, like uh, the Camus malentendu, between what you are talking about and how your body, how your chemistry, how your neurobiology, is uh, explaining and describing something totally different. How you hide your fears, for example, so the fears could be uh, a, an extension and increasing of, ser of, uh, of, um, of adrenaline and cortisol, and how in the same time you are still smiling. So you smile, so you try to reveal, to unreveal the situation, and in the, in the other way, you have the, to negotiate as a contradic for contradictory forces your status of human being. And I'm really interested uh, to develop this in terms of speculation, to make a building with that. To make a building to construct the malentendu, to construct the schizophrenia 
between uh, uh, the desire, the revealing, the, re the way to reveal the desire and the way to hide the desire. And of course, when you hide the desire, you do not know the pre psychism is not so clear. So what you, your body is thinking, the core acephal, the acephalous body, which is, which is bringing you to the animism uh, sensation of your environment. When you have the vertigo, before to reveal, before to feel the vertigo, before to feel the fears and to be, to caress the fears, uh, you have some secretion again of uh, adrenaline and cortisol to, to make the urgent reaction of your body in front of the danger. So what is interesting is first the reaction and secondly the consciousness produced by the rereading, by the interpretation of the signal produced by your body. So through that, we did, no, that is different. We did a kind of uh, projection of uh, nanotechnology, some curve of dopamine, adrenaline, cortisol, serotonin. And we have tried to mathematically understand how this malentendu between what I want and what I hide is able to be produced to produce a morphology, an habitable morphology, uh, something which where people have to negotiate with their complexity. It's also, if you check about uh, many philosophers now, they are uh, deeply re-questioning the libre arbitre, re-questioning the free will. We know how much the free will is entirely and very deeply corrupted by media cultures. We are across, all of us, we are across on a cross by, by advertising, by, uh, by, um, uh, um, by manipulation of desire. So it's interesting if we re-question this notion to reopen this kind of uh, phantasm to think that we are free, but to reread the, con the conflict inside ourselves. So we, we have tried to reread between, uh, v very simply, with a theory of belonging, using a mathematic of theory of belonging, what is the difference between uh, inclusion, intersection, attraction, independences, and repulsion, and to write a logic between the malentendu we perceive and the forces of belonging we could write mathematically. To produce first some cell, where there's some uh, uh, because uh, between the interview and the rereading of the, of the chemistry, we discover some, some very interesting schizophrenia between agoraphobia, agora or uh, uh, xenophobia, the, the fears of the others, the interest to be not so far away from your neighborhood, the, the, the fears of your own family, or at the contrary, the desire to be totally in an open space and to, to be totally in an exhibitionism value. So it was something to reread this morphology, to reread the, the potential of this morphology, of this, uh, of this living together, of this possibility to articulate the distances, the right distances through inside my family, but also inside, well, it doesn't work, but inside uh, through the limit or through the boundary of my own neighborhood and creating by this way some typology, morphology of living, which is every time, each time different, which is each time depending of this negotiation. So our negotiation of desire in this malentendu is able to produce a morphology which is totally outside of the architectures because it's not constructible, it's purely a morphology, a, a shoot, a photography of the distances of living inside my own cell, inside my own family, and with the neighborhood, with the limit of the others. So we are working a lot on that. And the second, in this speculation, the second part was to in include the structures. So to think the structures not, not as a preliminary logic to produce the architectures, but more as a collateral effect, as a second, as a, as a, as a, as a second effect. So we work as mathematician in C++ very hardly uh, all the two years to develop a kind of a structures which is incremental and recursive. It's exactly as like the trees. You have the trees growing, so fractal, but it's not fractal because when the trees is growing, it's always readapt, uh, modifying the diameters of the trunk to to understand how the equilibrium of the extension of the branching are recursively 
producing the transformation of his, his own stability with the roots on the trunk. So it's a very difficult way to calculate because you are in the same time incrementally, step by step, you grow the system, and the system has to be recalculated all the time to understand how this growing of the system is able to modify the pre-calculation you did, so to reinforce the equilibrium. So it's something, imagine, I have some box of substances, I have some points on the each uh, boundary of a system, each point has a vector, a forces, I apply a forces, and I, I discover an equilibrium of tension. So the trajectories are calculated by iteration in the same time, as I said, incrementally to approach the right, uh, the right trajectories and in the same time to calculate the other trajectory it, it calculated before to readapt what it calculated to the next step. So we have started to understand or to apply on this uh, structures without structures, on this building without structures. Uh, this uh, system of logic, and naturally, which is very interesting for me, it's uh, for me perhaps I'm alone in that side. It's to discover the tra at the same time to discover the, f the, the the trajectories of the forces and the trajectories of the structures. So uh, it's not to design or to pre-design the structures before and after to calculate the structures with a very sophisticated system and to understand the volume of the structures, but to discover through the calculation in the same time the shape the trajectories and the dimension. So it's a kind of uh, structures optimization, uh, which is each time different. Each calculation produces another result, of course, another production, and another situation of equilibrium, another transformation research of, uh, of uh, maintaining the sustaining, sustainable of the system. So after that, in the speculation, we have to construct it. So we, are, we try to develop a tangling system, a biochemistry, so, because it's not so easy to have a, a, kind, of a kind of a crazy structures floating in the air with interesting uh, calculation of resistance, of traction, uh, traction and compression, but with a very high problem of productive efficiency in terms of geometry and in terms of repetitivity, in terms of efficiency of production. So we develop a, bio a bioplastic with uh, Stuttgart uh, uh, University, which is able to be a bioplastic coming from the, um, the amidon, amidon, uh, amidon, the patatos, the patatos, uh, the patat, coming from the patat. <laughs> uh, and we start to do this kind of shit, you could say here, <laughs> We try, we try to develop some extrusion of bioplastic. Bioplastic compared to, uh, to petrochemy is mainly more interesting. He has um, some characteristic of uh, viscosity, of, uh, of uh, coagulation, which is really interesting if you try to, to extrude the bioplastic, you could control by polymerization the time of drying. And by this way, contradictory to the, to the, to the concrete, you could perfectly protocolize the time of drying and the experiments, depending on the time of the vertical extrusion. So we start to develop some vertical extrusion. You can see here a part of the a part of the fr of structures. So we start very badly by bad shit, and s slowly it became it became a little bit more elegant uh, in a way to control the, the system. We did also some resistance mechanical s uh, resistance. Uh, to understand the, how the coagulation uh, of this biochemistry is able to be resistant in terms of uh, compression and to absorb the cantilever of this kind of structures. And after that, we naturally develop a kind of machine which is able to weave to weave and to, to, to tricoter exactly this uh, bioplastic and produce step by step, step by step the aggregation and the, the staggering and the scattering of this, uh, of this uh, permanent unachieved system. So now, sorry, yeah. it's, we are exactly here first to try to define an, an achievement process Secondly, to define a protocol of reading the desire. Thirdly, to understand what kind of uh, mathematic tooling could help us to uh, cross this very problematic 
a bridge between rereading of Malentendu and uh, morpho, morpho production to understand after that what kind of structures we could apply to a system we don't know and to discover the structures through uh, performative uh, uh, um, uh, structural optimization, which means uh, like a generative algorithm uh, calculation and to understand as uh, next step to understand how we could construct it in terms of, uh, of materiality, in terms of substances, in terms of chemistry, to make some tests on this chemistry, to understand how the resistance in terms of um, uh, product productive resistance in, in architecture's field. And after that, to define the diacetic of the machine, which is able to protocolize it. And of course, to do the machine as prototypes, a prototype of uh, 1.5 meters doing this. I don't know where is the reality of that. And honestly, so I don't know if, if we are right or not uh, to do this kind of crazy research on, we are paid for that, we get money for that, that's why I, I, I am in bankruptcy now, but uh, uh, we don't exactly, we don't know, we, but we do it. It's forced us to articulate knowledge. It's forced us to articulate finally, to start with a, fi to, to start with a speculation and to understand step by step how the speculation could be integrated by knowledge knowledge of mathematics, knowledge of uh, chemistry, knowledge of uh, uh, behavior of machine, knowledge of the team around me also, because uh, uh, the team is a, is, a, is a sharing knowledge. How we, through this, we could share a part of time where uh, we could produce a magnetic point. Now, is this magnetic point able to produce or to attract the reality of today? Is it a pure dreaming of loser? as you said, I don't know. And I know that I want to keep this possibility intact. So, second part, we stop, we stop speculation and we go in fiction. We have time a little bit, yeah. Fiction, or fiction, fiction it's, uh, fiction for me, it's also to, 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 use, to use machine, but to use machine in a protocol which is more easy to understand. Narratively, it's still working. But uh, with the science of today, with, uh, with the industry of today, I'm able to use the machine or to, to protocolize the behavior of the machine to, to develop the project or to develop the, the, the constructively uh, the, the, the efficiency of the production of the machine. So that is, I'm going very fast on this uh, part, uh, a project where it's just stacking, staggering of a steel of, uh, a stick of, of uh, glass which is populating an existing building as a graft, as a smearing of an existing building to create a labyrinth where people could lose themselves and could be lost even to, to find the exit of the building uh, where they could redefine their position with the PDA uh, of Girotier, uh, I see. But uh, so you could see here the references and the recycling. So recycling produce, produce the machine is about 12 meters high and able to, to uh, with a kind of random of positioning, but very simple, very simple. So uh, it's not doing what you want. Uh, the freedom is very, very limited to create a staggering on a, on a, on a, on a transformation of a building of during 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, another, another machine, so another machine is a more a machine which is, a machine which is not producing the building, but trying to to bring back on the building the dirtiness of the environment. So it's a pollutive machine, exactly. So it's not so far away from this or from this. It's a machine which is this machine of one meters high. It's uh, in Korea. It's not so far away from the DMZ, Demetri Zone area, where there is uh, still the war between North Korea and South Korea. And we are doing a building which is a museum, private, and it's very complex. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, poly polyfunctional building, like everywhere in this part of the south or north, north of the South Korea, and uh, this, uh, you see the machine here. And the machine is uh, bringing back the biomass around the building, which is a forbidden area, military area, to bring the biomass, the rotten biomass, in uh, fermentation, producing the warming and the insulation of the building itself. So it's a way to bring the dirtiness to insulate the building. So it's something which we we are still working. I'm not sure we are realizing it. There is some trouble now in Korea. 
but uh, we have a second project I will show you. But it's a project, it's a military zone, so you could see also how it has been designed, but I don't want to talk about that too much. It designs the ballistic value as, a, as how the bullet create a trajectories, create a flower, create also an aesthetic of the paranoia, an aesthetic of the danger, and I was from the aesthetic of the danger, it's uh, helped us to, produ to produce the porosity and the accessibility and the porosity of the building. So the trajectories of the monstrosity and the, and, the, and the aesthetic of this perforation is also the way to produce the remembering of where we are. So we are not anywhere, we are located somewhere. So uh, I, I, I'm really always interesting how the machine is territorialized. Machines are not floating in the air as a pure deterritorialization de system. It's also something coming from somewhere and apply somewhere. So that's a machine. And that is, a, is the first time I bought a, a rifle. I'm not a hunter, right? so. And uh, we bought a rifle, a 20 millimeters. It's the maximum we could buy in France. We could buy in France, and uh, uh, so we shoot a lot. The first time we shoot, the bullet do that on the concrete, on the, on the ground, so well, nobody was, was hurt, was bleeding. But we start to perforate during three months enormous element of clay, it was fantastic, to hunt, to hunt the clay, and, uh, and to, after that, to cut the clay, to understand this kind of uh, trajectory, this kind of aesthetic with a scanning system, and to really produce a building which is coming from the situation, with the machine bringing the dirtiness, the biomass coming. Another machine uh, I want to show you is a uh, Darwinism apparatus, very quickly, it's a machine, it's just a vehicle. Sometimes you don't need to make a machine to produce a building, but just to reach a building. So it's a machine coming from a building to another one, it's a building from the 50s to a building we are constructing, uh, we try to construct, it's different. And so it's a machine, if you look at exactly, which is from, uh, with photovoltaic, which is from sitting down to standing up. So it's a machine which is able to go from an existing building, which is here, André Bloch House, which is uh, on Meudon, on the south of France, on the south of Paris, to an extension of André Bloch House we are doing here by a kind of uh, octopus hydroponic system, hydroponic natures, totally uh, wrapped by a parasite of the natures. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, so finally the next building is not visible, it's totally covered, not covered, but colonized by uh, hydroponic parasite. It's a typical parasite called Bromwich. Bromwich is also a parasite, uh, which is producing the extension of the natures by forcing the natures to produce more, and this parasite, by this way, is uh, using this, uh, this uh, exacerbation, this extension of production to feed himself. So it's something as the, how the parasite of the natures, uh, the, the disease coming from, the toxicity of the disease coming from the natures is creating the invasion of the, of the back of the garden and by this way, by this colonization and infiltration of the natures by the natures, creating on his uh, own uh, uh, situation the extension of an existing building, reachable by this machine going from the André Bloch here to this extension here with a fantastic tower of André Bloch which is on just on the middle, which is a labyrinth, a kind of vertical labyrinth, where you could lose yourself, where you could su suicide yourself. Um, another way, it's uh, the building we are showing to in the Venice of Biennale. It's a laboratory of research we are doing with Zoom Tobel to try to understand many things, to understand the dark adaptation. Dark adaptation, it's a physiological, so the machine is very simple, it's a rotation of a building, trying to track the moon. The, 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 um, the dark adaptation is a building with three dimensions. Dark adaptation is a way to reduce the urban pollution of light by touching the physiological uh, point where you are starting to scare you. Exactly when you arrive to a dark room, you need five seconds, between five seconds and 10 seconds to recover the view. And during this five and 10 seconds, because physiologically there is a point where after seven seconds you rediscover your environment. And during this five or 10 seconds you scare. You're afraid of the situation. And slowly, slowly you recover and re-understand your environment and your situation where you are and uh, reconfort yourself. 
And by this way, if we touch this point, if we have a better knowledge on this point, we could reduce the light environment, the light pollution inside the city to this point. Very low, it's between uh, one lux and uh, 10 lux. So it's very, very low, not so far away from the moonlight, from the full moonlight uh, effect. So it was, a, it was a project which is in the same time working on that, in the same time working on the the melatonin producing by the sun. At the same time, it's a project which is entirely populated by a component done by uh, uranium, uranium powder. So uranium are coming from here. We bought some uranium, 10 kilo of uranium in New Zealand from your country, Mark. Uh, thank you for the, uh, for the connection. Uh, and uh, and um, we bought some from New Zealand and uh, we were totally illegal, of course, to import uranium in Europe. So it's, a, it's not uranium coming from nuclear power station. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, of, it's not retreatment. It's a raw uranium coming from the mine. So we bought 10 kilo of uh, powders. And we include this uranium in this glass component for several reasons. One reason, and all this component is entirely populating the building. And uh, the uranium has this uh, kind of uh, uh, capacity first to inform us about the barbarie of the past. Uh, you know, from the discovery of the radium of Pierre Marie Curie, from the discovery of the X-ray, because he was the first scientific discovering to, uh, to, to go through your body, and to go through the items, to go to see what is behind or beyond the reality of surface, which is a fantastic invention at the beginning of the 19th century, and which became uh, an invention until Little Boy. Little Boy, you remember the bomb of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the first. I don't, uh, wait, I, don't, uh, I don't remember the second nickname of the, of, the, of the nuclear bomb. So it's our discovery, scientific discovery, produced the barbaria. So it's uh, indicators of the risk of the science. But at the same time, the, the uranium has have a, have a, have a, have a, a characteristic, has a very interesting behavior of, uh, of uh, after glowing, of, the, uh, of, uh, photo of, um, uh, sorry, of a luminescence, depending on the intensity of the UV crossing the atmosphere, touching the uranium, and exciting the powder, the uranium, to create an after glowing. So it's an indicator or marker of the weakness of the ozone, of the weakness of the ozone layer in the stratosphere situation. So we, you, could leak, you could see here the test we did at the studio of uh, uh, 20 hours of uh, uranium uh, uh, after glowing. So it's absolutely incredibly the, the exciting, the absorption and the, the collecting of the sun power, exactly not the sun power, the UV power is absolutely enormous. And through the after glowing, we could reveal by the same time the degree of the UV crossing the atmosphere and producing the pathology on human, on human being, produce the disease and the pathology, and many pathology on human beings. So finally, that is, a, that is exactly the uranium stone, which has been removed as a Biennale uh, because of uh, the police of paranoia came. <laughs> uh, I love the police of paranoia. Uh, like, uh, like, uh, like a Philip Kadik paranoia, uh, you know that. Uh, but uh, so the police of paranoia came, but they came only 10 days after the opening. <laughs> so all the architects are totally contaminated now all over the world uh, because of me. Now, well, uh, behind it, of course, we, we have many scientists working with us, uh, and uh, the stone of uranium is only um, uh, rejecting a radioactivity of alpha ray. And the alpha ray is totally filtered by your skin. And the alpha ray direction, uh, distances, lengths of radiation is only 20 centimeters. So we put the uranium stone at distances of the public, of course. But in a way, it was also the organization of the paranoia. And the paranoia to talk about the danger, how it's carrying the danger, it's carrying also the memory of the danger, and the reminding, the remind of the danger is created during the, just the past, the, the, the past which is not so far away. And also, and uh, what is interesting, is also articulate the danger as a marker of the futures, as a modification of the biotope. So I'm really interested now to make a building not as a sustainable energy, as a sustainable energy, as a sustainable development building, but more of how a building could reveal the situation, could be a test, could be a marker, could be an indicator 
of uh, without any catastrophism or any denying the situation, just uh, something revealing what it is. And what it is is enough perhaps to help us to react. Oh, the other thing is, that is the Biennale. The other thing is, of course, the after glowing is only coming by night. So the dangerous of the day, the dangerousness of the day is only revealed with a gap of distances by night. So you could understand by night how you have been touched by day, the day before, by the uh, UV of the sun touching you and creating the pathology. So I really think that we have to articulate this kind of gap of time as a different, as an alterate, alterate situation where you understand always a little bit too late, always a little bit too late to understand the day you, you just across to be touched so well. You, we, we, we are showing the building, we are showing the component, and uh, just, just a little stone has been removed. The stone is on the middle. And all the component you see here is about down by 10 kilo of uranium without any emission of radioactivity because of the glass is, is a kind of gelling the, the emission, but not gelling the, the, the after glowing effect. So we just flash the, comp the 50 component by a very, very uh, limited flash of 10 seconds. We flash it and uh, the, the 10 seconds of flash was enough to keep this uh, luminescence during the three minutes. So, well, it's a research, uh, this biennale where people meet architectures. I don't want to talk about specific as biennale, but it was for me the occasion to show that uh, to meet architectures is when we are cliffhanger and when you are linked by a rope or when you are looking at the film of Tarkovsky Stalker, you could reach the unknown at the condition to risk the unknown with somebody else. So, and to trust the other to reach the unknown. And you, you, uh, when you have a cliffhanger and when you are linked with a rope, you, you have no other way than to trust the other, to take the risk to trust the other. And this trust, you meet something. You, you meet the others, you meet in architectures the others, but you meet also something which is uh, the risk of uh, the recognition of this risk. And the, the, the um, alors la, le, la, la dimension raisonnée <laughs> de la reconnaissance du risque. Sorry for French. I'm fr in French, it's perfect. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, of course, sometimes a machine is a three axis machine, five axis machine. We are doing a building with five axis machine. So the machine is very basic in, uh, in, uh, in the factory, and the factory is digging the, uh, digging the wood. And by digging the wood, we are in kind of an anthroposophic system because the building, so you see the machine, 40 meters by 10 meters with a six, six, six axis machine, which is able to do an enormous fragment of wood, uh, uh, which is by this way, we, we are now doing this building, uh, creating a building which only done by assembling, assembling monolith uh, elements, uh, which reinvent for me the notion of uh, course on organ, body without organ. There is no really ceiling, there is no really structures, there is no five point of architectures, uh, as you know. Uh, there is no point of architectures. <laughs> Everything is like a body, a big body in wood, and the, body, the wood absorbed by the itself uh, construction, insulation, waterproofing, love, no, not that, and uh, so it's, in a <laughs> it's, it's absorbed everything on spike. So it's a little monster, it's a little monster, we are not talking about that today. It's a museum of glaciology of ice in the, in the Evelyn, in the, in the valley in Switzerland. We are just doing now. But uh, 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 with a seismic zone, very complex, but well. And uh, fictional apparatus, uh, we have not a lot of time, so I want to go after fictional apparatus. So fictional apparatus is always to force industry, to force industry to orient industry, that is a building recycling, the pollution, so everything is uh, all the, it's not more than the facade, the membrane are uh, totally dedicated to the recycling of pollution internal of the building done six years ago. But so it's to force, it's a fictional for me, is to, is to, is to integrate not the industry of today, but the industry of tomorrow. Because we know that when we win a competition, we will construct the building 10 years after, those five, 10 years after, and we could now, with, uh, with the speed of the technology, 
we could try to protocolize uh, or to forecast a little bit what is the next step and to force the next step, to, to orient the next step, to absorb the next step in our uh, potentiality. So very old building uh, we did 10 years ago where we tried to, to capture the pollution of Bangkok, but it was very important to think that the building could be itself a machine, a psycho machine, and a machine which is absorbing the pollution, revealing the pollution, and by this way, uh, uh, revealing the degree of the failure of urbanism. So architecture is not to deny the situation, but also to, to, to uh, as Paul Klee said all the time, to make it visible, to make it visible. And I'm very interested to make visible how the situation is, without moralistic and without catastrophism uh, uh, pretension. So some very old building, and I want to go far away because I, I don't want to talk too much, finally. Um, that is a building which is like trying to absorb the sun power and became a freak by the uh, by the by the collection by the collect of the sun power to produce the unplugged value it was a long time ago but we never constructed so i want to go in the ashy end the last part of this is how we could uh, sometime try to negotiate the construction so we have speculation where we could not exactly dream we could make protocol to articulate knowledge with the science of today, but with a protocol of managing the science in a political value. The second is to force the industry to go somewhere, to orient the industry to go somewhere in my direction. Well, I, I hope so it will go. And the third one is to, to, be re to integrate the resignation to dismiss a little bit, to dismiss, not to change anything, but to do what we are, to do something with what we have in real time, in real life, with the materiality of today. So we did a building like this with a very simple uh, system of concrete box with very low, low technology and very weak technology, and very wrap by uh, textile system. So to get the permission, it was very, very difficult to get the permission because of this kind of tower, um, uh, because of patrimonial, patrimonial aspect. First, we construct the tent to hide the construction we produce inside the tent, totally hidden against the, the administration. So we get a prosecution, of course, but we integrate the cost of the prosecution inside the cost of the building, because uh, when you get the permission to construct physically something, uh, which is appears as something, you could f from inside do something else. So by this way, we, we, we play a kind of trick, a trick a strategy from the, uh, to the administration to arrive to a situation, to do a tent as a fragile, and to justify to the guy in charge of the censor, the guy of the in charge of the archaeology, that there is a gap of time between the tower, which, could be the, which was here one millennium ago, and which will be here in one millennium, our little fragile architectures cannot finally correspond to a kind of dialogue. It's something else. It's talking about another time. It's talking about a time where there is nothing. It could be totally destructible as uh, the weak architectures of the three little pigs in the, in the legend. So another apparatus is this one we just constructed in, in, in uh, last year's. It's a very simple uh, extension of a house with a hydroponic, uh, very weak wall. We didn't produce uh, very sophisticated architectures, but in a way, this kind of wedding clothes is entirely covered by both fern, 2000 fern, entirely fed by nutri nutritional system one by one. You could see here all the tube, I think, sorry, all the tube here, one by one. Each element are fed one by one. And we integrate in this, uh, uh, in this nutritional system a bacteria. We are producing the beaker here, which is a rhizobome. And this bacteria is able to reinforce the nitrogen process of production of the ground of each fern. So by this way, it's a bacteria reinforcing, in the same time, the chemistry, the biochemistry of the project, the introdu introducing the loop of production of nutrition and uh, re-injecting the nutrition inside the, the production of in the growing of the plant. Uh, at the same time, it's a balance between fears and green value. 
and we have a prosecution now <laughs> in a, with the neighborhood around because they, they ask us to put away all the bacteria, of course. They ask us to, be, to put away all the chemistry experiment and to stay in the greenwashing and just to stay in the greenwashing. And it's interesting how the greenwashing has a value, but the way to feed the plants and to create the loop of the, of the chemistry to feed the plant, of course, is totally forbidden. So it's a very simple way, and uh, we, did, we did it with a craftsman, so no computation here, there is absolutely no computation. It's craftsman, each component is done by hand, by blowing, it's, each component is different because the blowing, the pressure of the blowing, it's each time different, so finally it's a repetitivity and singularity, like the Deleuze, but done by hand and by blowing. And uh, in a very simple way, and the box, uh, the box, the internal box is very cheap and very weak in terms of architecture. So it's always in this kind of strategy here now is to define the part where we could put sophistication and the part where we are obliged to negotiate with the forces, to compromise with the forces, but to compromise in one part and to, to find a dialogue between what we compromise, uh, what we strategically low-tech and what we reinforce in terms of narration, in terms of technology, in terms of um, uh, 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 storytelling. The other uh, building we just finish it's uh, of the last four years with the same strategy it's a tent it's a tent which is it's a, it's a building of uh, again a tent of four meters 400 square meters but totally hidden inside the tent so there is absolutely no visibility no facade nothing so you need to walk during 10 minutes in a, in a forest to reach a building in sign of the south forest like very 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 uh, strange forest very beautiful forest and you arrive in the building with absolutely no visibility of any facade, no visibility of any appearance of what could be a building. You just arrive in something as a permanent corridor, so where the vegetation is totally let without any control, and just the, the curtain are the limit of this growing, and through some windows, beautiful windows, uh, uh, pour voir les oliviers, some swimming pool, and uh, you could see here just an entrance an entrance, and you could, of course, appear the building a little bit inside. The entrance is just sliding windows, uh, totally hidden. So the, when the windows is open, uh, the porosity between exterior and interior could be entirely like the wind, like nothing, without any appearance of the uh, fence, of the limitation, of the limits, as you said, of the, of the indoor and outdoor. So it's very simple, oh, that is a, it's the only, the bottom of the client, so it's, it's, she has a, she's a very beautiful bottom. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and the last, uh, the last thing, it's also, again, uh, this kind of strategy of production, very archaic, when we do a machine, it's like a machine as a bicycle. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the, the engine, it's just a cow, uh, it's just a buffalo. So, and uh, it's a water, it's, um, it's a power station uh, in uh, north of uh, Thailand. So it's a plastic, very sophisticated. We try to work on computers to do something entirely controllable, but which seems to be endogen, which seems to be done by the people themselves without exotism uh, production. It's totally lost in the countryside. And uh, even the, the, the students are totally lost. If you see, the Thai people I don't understand exactly what is the use of the building and what is the, the, the buffalo. At the beginning, we were interesting to buy an elephant, but uh, it because it's so much, it's powerful an elephant, and it's five times more powerful than a buffalo. You can imagine how it's powerful. Uh, buffalo is 700 uh, kilowatt per hour, not enough, and uh, so well. And, and a buffalo is crazy. You see, you need to pull the buffalo, which is pulling the cable, linked to a rotative cylinder, linked to a balance to storage the energy, and by the by the by the um, by night to light the building and of course to, to produce a battery for laptop, for, for computers, etc. So it's very basic in a way, the strategy of uh, doing with, uh, with uh, low technology, but all the time to bring the bacteria, to bring the buffalo, to bring the, 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 the envelope which hides, uh, which hides the architectures, to, to bring something which shift the building in something else and purely to construct an iconographic totem. And the last, the last, I don't know, because of course, if we have three elements, fiction, speculation, here and now, we are, we are now discovering the intersection. We are discovering the interface between. 
So we just finish this uh, element, which is done by bioplastic. So we force industry to produce a bioplastic, to produce a prototype, to produce a kind of wall with bioplastic, which is by controlling the humidity in the air, by controlling the, the, the degree of humidity, we could control the necrosis of the death of this element. The bioplastic is incredibly resistant, incredibly uh, strong. So it's structural, it's really structural, but it's necrosis, it's totally, it's not melting, it's necrosis slowly, keeping the, 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 the structural behavior step by step. Uh, uh, and by controlling the humidity in the air, we could or reinforce or stop the death or stop the evolution of the transformation. So we did another one that I want, don't want to talk about today. So in a way, we did another one is in the Zahadid building. We did a kind of joke. They asked me, oh, we want, we want this, this uh, prototype also in the Zahadid building in Roma. So I, I, I went to see the building and it was so much retro futures, so much uh, uh, coming from the past, so much the arrow of time as a nostalgia of the past as a futures value. So finally we reproduce it, but with a kind of, uh, I don't know if it's ironic, but with a kind of uh, petroleum system dropping down all the day to dirt entirely the Zahadid building and to flood, to make the flooding of the Zaha with a kind of petroleum of uh, ugly textures of viscosity of dirtiness. So I'm not so, uh, not so proud of that, but it's ridiculous. But in a way it was a way to, to say yes, because my prototype earned in money and uh, it was a way to bring some uh, project to my, to, my, to, my product, to my own production. So well, I want just to finish this. You, you understand that reality is a cursor for us. We have a conflict. Clearly, oh, to answer to your question about loser, we have a conflict between here and now, fiction, tomorrow, and speculation. And this conflict, we cannot, we could resolve, we could start now perhaps to resolve the interstice, the intersection between the three elements. And uh, it's interesting to have several labels when you are architect, because in a way, you, if the label die, you could jump on another label. So you are not entirely uh, predictable. You could also drift or shift or jump on another system to produce with, uh, with another value. You could also mix um, like a miscibility, several system. So it's, uh, it's um, this conflict between uh, back to the future, tomorrow now, backward futures, pulsion of, li pulsion of life, pulsion of death. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if I try to, if I convince you <laughs> tonight uh, that the future is a little bit uncertain, that uh, the arrow of time is not so clear. Uh, we are deeply feeling that the arrow of time, we try to express or to make visible that uh, we cannot deny this, uh, this uh, troubling perception, this troubling situation, uh, this dangerosity of the, of the present, uh, but hesitating between past and futures, between regressive and prospective. And it was interesting at the Biennale that he was b also talking about regressive and pr prospective uh, between a palpitation, a vibration, so we cannot deny this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, vibration as uh, intellectual value and as an aesthetic uh, value to, to produce and to reveal again. So I'm starting for the, so on your question, I'm starting, as I said, for the third time with bankruptcy. So that is, uh, an architect is always on bankruptcy. So finally it's not so, I'm not, it's arrived two times before. So it's forced us to react and to create perhaps another scenario, another label uh, to react. And uh, uh, just to finish, it's, um, it's an interesting question, uh, this apparatus of, the, um, of uh, arrow of time. When Orpheus went, when Orpheus went in, the, in the hell to bring back Eurydice, he came with the instrument of music and he played the music with a machine. And because he plays the music, we don't know if he plays Sibelius or Stockhausen or Boulez or Mozart music, but in a way, because he plays the music, he came back with Eurydice. And what is interesting is also this machine, the dimension of a machine which is able to modify the situation, 
not only in terms of uh, productive, not only in terms of efficiency of uh, production, but also in terms of uh, fairy tale, narration, and storytelling. So thank you for tonight. So I start at 6.30. Hi, uh, hello. Um, could you talk a little about the filmic level of your work, your collaboration with Paran, uh, Philippe Parano, I think, for the Thailand project and the kind of filmic aesthetic that we seem to see in the work? For the Thailand project, we work with Philippe to make this kind of uh, uh, umbrella with a cow, with a, with a buffalo. And uh, it was impossible to get the, pr the, the, the budget to produce the, 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 the building. So with Philippe, we were commissioned by Rikriti Ravanisha, an artist, to make a building wi without money, without any budget. So we defined a strategy to make a movie. Because if you do a movie, you could get back a budget. Many, many uh, museums could pay a movie, but not a building. So we decided to make a movie. And, uh, and we sell the movie to the MoMA, we sell the movie to several, to se several institutions. And with the budget coming from the movie, we construct the building. And that's why we did a movie, but the movie is very weak, because the movie is just a standing up camera without any movement, showing a kind of uh, something appears in the building, very, very low, but very beautiful, you know, very beautiful. Uh, and Philippe Pareno did the movie. I did the building. So I did the building with the budget of the movie. And I did the movie without the budget of the movie, because I swallowed the budget of the movie to do the building. So that is uh, typically uh, corresponding between artists and architect. It's a strategy. Um, uh, it's a strategy of production. So it's not only to put the poupette. Uh, I love the poupette of, of, of Bilbao, of course. Uh, everybody loves the poupette of Bilbao. But it's not only the 1% in front of the building as a revendication of the artistic value. It's more to write a scenario with four end and to understand how the scenario is also a way to produce the game, so it's a game, and that's why the, the name of this project is a game. It's a game, so it's an interactive situation, like a situationism way to produce over the production, the narration which produces the production. But that word scenario seems to be quite important in your work, and even the way you show the machines, they're always moving in, in a way that's very poetic, um, that's not, uh, I feel like you are presenting your machines as if they're small movies of beautiful machines. That there's a, a filmic quality, I think, that is beyond just the Thailand project. Uh, yeah, the, the, the machine is in movement. Uh, but you make uh, movies of them. No, no, my machine, uh, machine is something in movement. So it's difficult to talk about a machine without to, in to integrate a little part of its movement and to understand also how, how the articulation works. So make a machine is also design the articulation, design the behavior, and design not only the behavior of the software which is able to produce the production of the machine, but de designing the machine is also take care, like a building, take care of how it works. And immediately when you are doing a movie of a machine, you could see immediately if it works or not. Immediately it reveals the degree of sophistication of absorbing the movement as a protocol of production. So this is why the movie in this kind of for a machine is also the proof that this works. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, do you think about socializing and politicizing the schizoid machine, or you think there's no point in doing that? But socializing, politi politizing, you said po politizing. Yeah, politicizing the schizoid machine. 
But politicizing, it's when we are using a machine to produce uncertainties uh, uh, or undeterminacy or an achievement linked to the desire, linked to the reading of this malentendu of the desire. For me, the machine is a vector of unknown, is a vector of this undeterminacy. So in a way, the machine in this case is trying to, to is trying, is trying, uh, trying to mix the bottom up or the top down which is, uh, we, nobody know how to, m to mix bottom up or top down. Uh, it's, uh, we have the decision, uh, of you control everything, and you need to let a part of the decision arriving without to entirely frame it. Uh, uh, and to organize the possibilities that is coming and change your model. So in this case, I think the machine is, for us, a non square uh, to the possibility to create or to construct the multitude. So the multitude is not only bricks on the suburbs of Mexico, it exists. The negotiation between neighborhood on the suburbs of Mexico and the slum architectures is something absolutely sophisticated, absolutely with a protocol of loophole, administrative loophole is absolutely incredibly sophisticated. And I would like to find to, to produce with sophistication, with, with technological sophistication, the same potentiality without s with something which is not only bricks and addition of bricks. Y you have s s three types of construction. Huh? You have a subtraction, which is a troglodyte architectures, addition, which is the, the bricks, and you have also f formative, pre-formative or formative, forming architectures, which is a concrete. And it's interesting to reread the concrete technology in terms of um, releasing the concrete to the framework, releasing the concrete from the framework or from the casting to use the concrete as a materiality of an, an achievement, of discovering the shape during the production of the shape itself, which is the um, next millennium, perhaps, <laughs> or somewhere. Like I said, it's a speculation, on an, like an, an island utopia or anarchia in another reality. Yeah, I don't know if I answer to you. Yeah. yeah. Are you looking for some kind of sense of truth in your work? Because the schizoid machine, the mix between top down, bottom up. Right? That is beautiful. You're looking for this I uncorruptible thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. You know the, the movie, The Truth of Orson Welles, is one of the best movies. Very badly, nobody knows this movie. It's Orson Welles. Uh, for, for many reasons, he was in Brazil, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Universal Studio pushing away, and because uh, for some reason he gets some money, not so much, to make a movie without any scenario. And he found a scenario, it's a kind of protest of, uh, of the farmer coming from the south, of the fisherman or the farmer coming from the south of Brazil, and re uh, reaching Rio de Janeiro by, by jumping by boat. But it was by boat, very by trunk boat, very fragile, and so it's boat just to do from from edge to edge, from beach to beach. And they, ten years before, they succeed because of that. The property of the farmer and the fisherman changed completely of Brazil, and uh, Orson Welles was trying to reproduce it with the same actor, the same real actors who did it. So the first day of the producing of the movie. The boat came, it's not exactly a boat, huh? it's like a rado boat by trunk with a kind of sailing. And, uh, and the, the people on the boat who did it, they did 3,000 kilometers to reach the north of Brazil to bring their protest on the, on the federal system and to, with all the population on the ground. And so it was a very important movement of political, of the worker, of uh, underclass uh, people. But the first day, Orson Welles, People were so interested, the actor, which was finally the real people who did the story, was so interested by the camera that they didn't see the waves coming and three of them died. And the movie is the truth. So the movie is, talking, is called The Truth. It's the truth trying to reproduce the reality and the re reproduction of the reality creates a failure. Reproduce, report, and create the failure of the of this same reality. So this kind of truth is interesting me. But deeply. I think it's a good spot to end. <laughs> <laughs> okay.